Hello, this is Miss James. Um, this is primarily uh, a podcast or a screencast, I should say, designed to help those students who are new to Brewster figure out what an EDD is and for returners to get a bit of a review. Okay, here we go. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to write up a fabulous EDD. Why do you want to have an experimental design diagram? There are a couple of reasons. First, you want to show that you understand how the experiment is laid out. So the basics of experimental design. And you want to be able, fundamentally, to understand what we're doing before we're doing it. So it gives you a flavor for what we're going to do before we actually get into the lab and hopefully will help you avoid common problems. This is a format for the EDD. Um, it is a question statement, which means a clear statement of what the question you are asking is. A hypothesis, which is a guess, an educated guess, but a guess as to what the answer to the question statement will be. Then there's IV, which is the independent variable. That's the thing you're choosing to change and you want to know what values you're going to pick. Then for each time you, you try something, you're going to want to have multiple trials. So the question is, how many trials? Am I going to do three trials of each IV value? 10? 20? We'll see. And then after that is the DV. The DV is the thing that you are trying to see whether it changes when you change the IV. So the IV you choose to change, the DV you see, is it affected by changing the IV? And then because you only want to vary one thing at a time, I want you to be aware of those things that you are holding constant. Purposefully holding constant so that you can um, figure out what the effect of the IV is. Okay, let's um, try an example. So here's a, a question. A person's trying to see if the school grade, whether the, a kid is in 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th grade, will have an effect on the height of the person. So the first one is to set up the format, Shazam. Then the second step is to identify what is the IV and the DV. I know that's not the first thing on the list, but that's really how you need to do this. So you're choosing to look at school grade. That is your independent variable. That is the thing you're choosing to change about your subjects. And then you want to see if that has an effect on height. So height is your DV. So fill it in. Step three, you can fill out the table. Okay, so what are going to be your values of IV? Well, you're going to look at 9th graders, 10th graders, 11th graders, and 12th graders. And the number of trials is probably, in this case, the number of students you're going to be looking at for each grade. So in 9th grade, there are 20 students we're looking at. In 11th grade, there are 42. The next, you can fill out the hypothesis in the question statement. The question statement, typically I give you and you just copy. The hypothesis is the answer that you think you're going to get to the question. So as the school class gets higher, you probably think the average height of the grade will be higher. So the question is, will the, will the height students change with their school class? Will the height of students change with their school class? Then you have to think about constants. Well, what things could we hold constant? Well, maybe we could hold gender constant because boys are bigger than girls, so maybe we want to hold that constant. Um, different races tend to have different heights. Asian students tend to be tend to be shorter. This is obviously not true of everybody than, um, say, Caucasian students. So. I'm going to ask only girls and only Caucasian girls to be a part of this. And there's your fabulous EDD. If you have any questions, please feel free to come see me during team study. 
And for new students, realize that a lot of the returners have done this many, many times in the past. Use them as resources. Good luck. Bye.